So we've now moved indoors, um, where typically a lot of post-processing for deep sky, um, lunar, solar, um, any kind of imaging really occurs. I've got the same laptop that I was using out in the garden earlier. Um, these are some images that I've taken uh, previously of the sun uh, using a wide variety of different solar telescopes. This image was taken using a modified Coronado PST uh, with an 80 millimeter aperture. Um, this was at an active region um, a few weeks ago. What we can see now is we've loaded up the image into a piece of software called AVStack. Now, you can either use AVStack or there's also a very popular uh, application called Registax, which I can flick to here. Uh, very similar in terms of what they do. This is Registax 4. Registax 5 is now available, which has some new features. I'm tending to stick with Registax 4 because I found uh, a few minor niggles with Registax 5, but I know a lot of people are using it very successfully. So if I move back to AVStack, very similar principle. What we have in AVStack is the ability effectively to align the frames, uh, making sure that you haven't got any major amounts of drift in it. That's one of the key differences between AVStack and Registacks. AVStack tends to work very well on images that are well tracked, well aligned. Registacks is a little bit more tolerant if the images are drifting out of, out of the field of view. So we can see the active region here. Um, we've got nice uh, kind of structure around the active region. We've got the sunspot itself. We've got some nice filaments coming off here and kind of uh, the more explosive elements of the active region uh, in the center here, a bit brighter. Um, first thing we do is we set up the alignment frames. Um, so in the case of AVStack, what you typically do if you're doing lunar imaging, for example, you may have a crater here and a crater here. You try and position uh, your alignment points as far away as possible. With the sun, it can be a little bit more difficult, especially with um, seeing conditions, etc., where you're trying to maybe align on um, some of the chromospheric uh, surface detail here um, or here. But this can disappear and fade away, so it can be a little bit more difficult. Um, typically, if I'm focusing on and around a sunspot region, I will uh, set the alignment points uh, for this example um, close to the active region itself. So I'll set the first alignment point there directly on the sunspot itself. And I'll set the second alignment point just above it. Uh, left mouse click to select the first alignment point, right, right mouse click to select the second alignment point. There now set, we click apply. What the software will now do when I click on align frames is actually go through all of the frames in the video. In this case, it's 475 frames, not a, a very long video. And you can see as it's going through it, the differences in quality of seeing um, that I was experiencing while I was shooting this video. This is over a period of just maybe a minute or a few seconds. But the seeing conditions, even at 15 frames a second, were changing quite dramatically, frame by frame. What these software applications do, like AVStack and Registax, is take the best frames out of the entire set, and they take regions, they effectively will map, in the case of AVStack and Registax, if you tell it to, will map multiple region points around the image itself, and determine which are the best sections of that image, and then blend them all together and composite the image to create a much better final quality image. As you can see, the image is dancing about quite a bit, but the tracking is quite good. Um, we had it quite well polar aligned, and the sunspot itself that we're focusing on is retaining its position uh, in the centre of the screen. Uh, the dancing about, again, is caused due to the seeing with quite high thermal effects on these days, um, and other conditions, you know, clouds going by. All these types of things can affect, um, obviously, what you're seeing uh, on the surface of the sun. So we're now approximately 70% 70, 70 through aligning the frames. As I said, it gives you a nice little timer at the top, as does Registax, um, basically indicating how long. It gives you a kind of uh, bar um, along the screen indicating how long it's going through a timer uh, to show you how, full, how far through the process you are. Once that's completed, it will have set the alignment point. I can then set additional parameters like cutoff. If I'm imaging, for example, the limb of the sun where we've got spicules in hydrogen alpha, these kind of small um, transient um, kind of lines that appear on the side of the sun. Um, so it gives me an alignment graph at that point, uh, popped up onto the screen there. Um, what we can now do, as I said, is set the cutoffs. Now, this transfers it into a false color. Uh, we can switch back to original color, but false color is quite nice. It's, it's quite an effective and dramatic demonstration. Now, if I was imaging the limb, I wouldn't want to align or set any kind of quality or alignment parameters for the black space around the edge of the sun. So I'd set a cutoff that came and basically dropped in, um, said it wasn't kind of doing any calculations in that region of the sun. Uh, we can set things like a smoothing factor, which determines um, the quality of the smoothing between the separate um, registration points, as it were. And we can set a minimum distance. If we set these um, uh, against their uh, optimal uh, settings for this one, just to speed up the demo, because AVStack can take quite a long time to uh, do all these calculations. Click on set reference points. It will now generate, as we can see, hundreds or even sometimes thousands of reference points for the image. 
each of these reference points, the software will then analyze the quality of the image within these various regions and segments. And then at the final stage, it will take all of the best bits and composite them into creating the final image. So we've covered AVStack, now we're going to cover Registax. Registax works in a very similar way in that it takes hundreds or thousands of frames of video and combines them to create a, a much higher quality final image. Effectively, it freezes the seeing. So the seeing in um, the previous video, as you can see, was quite turbulent. Now we've moved to a much wider shot, a whole solar disk shot. The seeing effects aren't quite as bad when working at lower magnifications, but we'd still like to get, obviously, a, a good final image. But this, for a basic kind of single frame of the original image, is quite good. And as I pan through it, you can see that the seeing was okay throughout the course um, of the video itself. This one is approximately 540 frames. To align um, this, you basically either select single um, point alignment, where we can select something as uh, clear cut as a sunspot there, or the active region, or we can select a filament, and we can change the box size accordingly if we wanted to encompass a larger area around that. We can then select how many frames we want to align, what kind of quality thresholds we want to set, um, and various different options throughout the software. As I said, Registax has been covered in a lot of detail, but it's very, very good, um, as is AVStack for solar imaging. Registax tends to work better, as I said before, if the image isn't exactly um, stable, if your polar alignment may be off and the image is drifting slightly out of the frame.